Hi guys, it's Steady. Let's talk about the OpenTX interface. Make sure to watch till the end because then I'll show you another modification I did to this radio. Oh yeah, that was the right switch. So the reason I started this whole project in the first place was because I bought a T16SZ and um, didn't know that it doesn't support bidirectional communication. That means the Futaba is able to communicate with the Crossfire module in one direction, but it's not able to receive any information from this module. I thought maybe I could build my own little box and make this box display um, the telemetry data. Some of you might think that I have invented my own hardware to do this, but I actually did not. Inside of here is the main board from the Flysky Nirvana radio. Let's quickly talk about this finish on here. As you can see, my 3D printer isn't printing that good anymore so i just use some um, sticky carbon style foil uh, which looks like this this has this carbon fiber finish let's open this up as you can see it's just the board of the Nirvana from Flysky and I routed some cables inside. Um, this cable up here is your trainer port connection. Um, the black one is your ground. The cable which is going up here is your power and the yellow one is actually your crossfire data port and um, the black and red right here are the connection to the speaker in front of here and that is all there is to it this is actually just a custom case for the micro crossfire tx i just built this because i thought it's a little bit slimmer and um, it helps to quickly connect and release the terminal from the radio the cover is held in place with these little screws and as soon as they are unscrewed you can remove that and you can see everything inside of here. Um, it's a lot of cables because of this connector right here. If you use the big crossfire module you don't actually need to do this. You can route the cables directly into your big crossfire module. You actually have four cables coming out of the Futaba radio. Um, one is this yellow wire which is directly going to the USB-C. That is actually the trainer connection. And this white cable is connected to the data pin of the crossfire. The black is your ground and the red is your power. So you have one crossfire connection from the Futaba to this pin and also one connection from this pin to this USB-C connector. The Nirvana actually sent pulses to the crossfire module even though I deleted all the channels. In beta flight the values for the channels were constantly jumping around between um, so I had to find a way to stop the Nirvana board from sending pulses to the crossfire but still receiving the pulses. I've been uh, looking through the code of OpenTX for the Nirvana, experimented a little bit and commented um, stuff out and suddenly it somehow worked. That is still a little bit sketchy. So in a nutshell, um, the whole thing works like this. You have your Nirvana board and you have your Futaba. They are both connected to the same pin of the Micro TX. The Futaba only sends pulses and the Nirvana board only receives pulses. 
Everything else is done via the trainer port. All you have to do on your Futaba is actually go into your system type, select fastest 12 channel and also switch to page two where you have to set crossfire on. Another thing you have to do is you have to go to your trainer menu and um, trainer has to be active. Um, your teacher student has to be on student and channel mode is on eight channel at the moment. I'd love to use um, 60 channel, but uh, the Nirvana can't actually communicate with the Futaba um, when another channel mode than eight channel is selected. Let me plug in this little drone right here. I will plug in the battery. And now, as you can see, the crossfire is connected to the drone, but you cannot see any telemetry data. You can't see the RX strength. You cannot see the battery level. Um, yeah, and that's the main reason why I built this little thing. So, um, without further ado, let's turn it on. You have to press both buttons. Welcome to Futaba. Open TX. Reset. And now it's on. Um, I want to change it so that you don't have to press the buttons anymore and everything will turn on as soon as the radio gets power. But that's also something we have to change in the firmware of the Nirvana board. I try to arm this drone now. I can try to do that. Nothing is happening. And the reason nothing is happening is because I actually have to go inside of my settings for the external RF. I have to um, set it to off and then I have to set it on crossfire again. I have to do that every time I start this thing. If I don't do that, then it will still send pulses to the crossfire and will override stuff that the Futaba sends. So that's pretty dangerous and you have to think about that. Maybe I will uh, wait with releasing the firmware until this is done, um, but I need a little bit help for that. Maybe um, the guys from OpenTX can help us out a little bit. Okay, so now we did that. You can see that we actually see the battery level of the drone right here and I can arm the drone without any problems. Everything is still in vertical orientation and not horizontal orientation. Um, I tried to fix this, but I wasn't able to do it. So maybe again, we can find somebody who helps us out or maybe this will be changed in OpenTX 2.4. So now I can show you some functions as you can hear already. I have sounds, custom sounds, which are actually coming from this speaker, not from the Futaba. And everything is done over the um, trainer connection. Um, it's actually a little bit complicated, but I will provide you with those informations pretty soon. I think it's better if I just um, show you some screenshots um, how I set this up. You can actually use the INAV Lua script. It's also not in horizontal orientation, but everything on here is working. The battery level um, is showing, the link quality is showing and the vertical horizon compass and stuff like that is also working and i think it's very cool for people who fly wings or long range um, and it's a great addition for the futaba radio so that's all the information i can give you in this video for now you can already print yourself the case and stuff like that the files for that are on thingiverse um, the links are down in the description or you can find them in my new Facebook group that's called Steady's Mods. Thank you very much for watching and stand by for the next video where I will explain a little bit more in detail how to solder everything up and build this thing. So, um, yes. Don't. 
don't subscribe to this channel. I forgot something. I'm pretty sure I forgot uh, something. I'm pretty sure. Yes, I forgot something. Okay, guys, so I promised you to show you one more modification I did to this radio. And it's actually pretty cool. And you can do it with any radio you like. Um, and it works like this. I take the radio in my hands. Then I release it. Then I take it back into my hands.